Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Uh, it is an honor and privilege and pleasure to be with you yet once again in this continuing series of really good topics to inform you on. Hope everybody's having a great week thus far. Uh, looking forward to hearing more about what our presenters have today. I have two very good friends of mine presenting today, uh, Heather Wiegand from Health West and Detective Bruce Morningstar from the Norton Shores Police Department. That's right, Gary Nealon, he's from the Norton Shores Police Department. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit today about what, what's called CIT training, and I'm not even gonna begin to describe to you what that means, that's why we brought in the experts. So what I'd like to do, uh, if, if we could, real briefly, Heather and Bruce, if you could just spend about two minutes or less introducing yourselves, and I'm gonna jump right into the questions. We'll start with you, Heather, go ahead. Okay. Again, my name is Heather Wiegand, and I'm a clinical services manager at HealthWest, and I oversee what we call the corrections team. So that means we have persons working in our jail and in our community partnering with law enforcement and correctional services. Bruce? And I'm Bruce Morningstar. I work for North Shores Police Department. I am currently assigned to the Muskegon County Safe Seniors Task Force, and I'm also the uh, law enforcement liaison for the Police Mental Health Collaboration Project here in Muskegon County. Thank you, you too. And I, and I always forget, uh, you know, I take for granted maybe, uh, but my name is DJ Hilson and I'm the uh, Muskegon County Prosecutor, fellow Rotarian, and happy to moderate today's discussion. So Heather, I, I wanna start with you uh, and I'd like you to explain to our audience, first and foremost, what does CIT stand for? And what, what about its history prompted you to uh, learn about it? Okay, CIT stands for Crisis Intervention Team. And what that means is bringing together law enforcement and behavioral health professionals in order to create a system of care in a community. Uh, through our Muskegon County Diversion Council that we have been robust and collaborative engaged in for the last five years or more, Together, we've come up with objectives that turned into some pretty uh, aggressive goals on how do we do better? We can do better to treat individuals in our community who are experiencing behavioral health crisis and divert them away from the justice system and into care. So uh, when we started on that path, John Gale, Chief John Gale at Norton Shores, also sitting at the state table for Diversion Council, uh, learned about CIT and brought it back to us. Um, and we've been championing through so far to research and learn as much as we can about that. And now we're right here uh, making sure that gets built here in Muskegon County. Uh, Bruce, Detective Morningstar, how, how is it that you uh, got involved in this process? I'd been involved in uh, training at the police academy for mental health crisis response for quite a while and had taken some other training uh, along with this and then um, this opportunity came up to be able to be involved in crisis intervention team training and uh, I, I jumped on the opportunity um, i think it's super important for for the community to to have this i'm, I'm super impressed with uh, how far we've come in in really a relatively short time so uh, Heather, can you can you tell us why why this is important for uh, Muskegon County? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's important to a community to learn constantly learn how we can do better working together. Um, in fact, um, we'll get into it probably a few questions from now, but I think that uh, all of the community law enforcement, behavioral health systems, mercy health systems, education systems. If there's one thing that we keep being reminded of is we cannot solve our community barriers alone. Um, if we are not working together, we will continue to spin our wheels. And see, that's what CIT does, it brings us together. It consistently reminds us that we're better together. And if we don't stick to that, we'll continue to see the same barriers and, and problems in our community. I, I wanna stick with you, Heather, for this next question. And uh, I've already got a couple of follow-ups for you, Bruce, so you're not off the hook, sorry. Um, 
Can you just give us, uh, give the folks here at Rotary, uh, what, I guess, examples or what consists of CIT training, what it is exactly? Yes, actually, that's a great question because oftentimes when people hear about CIT training, they, uh, they make the assumption that this is a canned program, that there's some curriculum that is presented. And although there is a foundational design to crisis intervention team training, it's very intentional that each community is building their training by their community for their community. And so what that means is we do get a platform, a, a basic structure of topics that have been proven through evidence-based research to be successful community to community. But then you're looking for experts in their field in your hometown. And you also look at your own needs in your community to try to make some swaps if there are uh, programs or resources or topics of information that better fit Muskegon versus another community. So that's what Bruce and I have been up to for the last six months or better, is pulling together those professionals in our community and developing a 40-hour training specific to Muskegon because of the needs we know we have. So Bruce, as a law enforcement uh, officer, how how has, I'm gonna ask it, it's a two-parter. How has CIT training helped you in the performance of your duties now? And, and why is it important for law enforcement to be involved in this? Well, I, I guess I would say that um, part of the, the CIT, I think sometimes people think crisis intervention training, but it's actually crisis intervention team. And so really, kind of going back to what Heather said already, um, there, it, it's this concept that it's not sending law enforcement to training to learn how to handle these crisis situations. It's much more about how sending law enforcement to training in conjunction with others in the community, the service providers, and connecting those two entities. Very often, uh, when, when somebody is in a crisis situation, they call 911. They don't know who else to call. And so law enforcement is typically the one that responds to that situation. And law enforcement alone is not best equipped to handle those situations. So it's with these partnerships that we develop through crisis intervention team training that, uh, that, that we start to be able to really handle these situations in the best possible way. So what benefit? No, let me, I'm going to, believe me, I'm going to give you the second part. You don't get to skate. Uh, what what part of the crisis intervention team it hel has helped maybe you personally in, in, in an investigation or two or law enforcement in general here in Muskegon County? I, I think that um, just going to those situations where somebody is exper experiencing a mental health crisis situation, knowing who, who we can call because, you know, very often when, when we're responding to the situation, we, we feel like we have to solve the problem ourselves as law enforcement and knowing that there are other resources in the community to help us solve problems together collaboratively works so much better. Um, I think, you know, in the past, law enforcement would respond to these situations. We would recognize that there was a need in the community for somebody to be connected to services, but we really, <clears throat> excuse me, we didn't, didn't really have that, um, that mechanism in place to be able to connect the individuals that need the services with the services that we have in the community. We have great services in the community. We just need to to, to mix those things together. And, and uh, before I get back to Heather, Bruce, how have your peers in law enforcement embraced this idea of, of CIT and the training that's involved? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to say that uh, last week we, we did our first training and there were 16 uh, law enforcement individuals in the training that uh, were from various law enforcement, law enforcement agencies here in Muskegon County. Um, we had uh, the Sheriff's Office, Muskegon Township, Norton Shores, City of Muskegon, and the State Police. Um, I hope I didn't miss any. Um, but they were all represented. And, and there were people with uh, just a few years of experience, and there were, there were also those with many years of experience, and uh, some with uh, high rank. And uh, those individuals came through, and, and I think what you see on the first day is this, uh, is this thought, what am I getting myself into? Um, I don't know if I know, I don't know if I need somebody to tell me how to handle situations. I handle these types of situations every day. And then by the end of the, the, the uh, training, 
there's a lot of them that are saying things like, I wish I would have known this stuff 20 years ago. I wish I would have had these skills 20 years ago. I wish I would have known about these community resources 20 years ago. So, so I, I think that they uh, come to me in place. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and obviously, uh, like a lot of things, uh, at least in my experience, law enforcement fears change, right? I mean, uh, when you change things, there there is this general sense of, uh, you know, why? Why are we changing it? Uh, and, and this change seems to be a positive one, adding some additional resources to an already, you know, overloaded you know, you know, law enforcement community. Um, so, Heather, can you give us maybe an example of where this uh this crisis intervention team would be used uh and and certainly doesn't have to be a real life maybe a hypothetical unless you've got a real life example but where you know describe to the rotary community how this actually becomes a benefit to the community but in in law enforcement okay i can give you several examples probably because following our week-long training um over the weekend saturday and sunday we had a record number of contacts from law enforcement reaching out to our mobile crisis team and providing law enforcement referral to Health West. We had 18 of those contacts over the weekend post that training. And it was awesome. I mean, our, our mobile crisis teams were very busy, but those situations really um, varied. There were youth and family crises that were happening. So our youth mobile crisis team was dispatched to a few different homes to help mitigate family crisis. We also had several different examples of adults who were experiencing crisis in our community. One example, um, you know, this individual was seen by uh, businesses as possibly not being well. Uh, they recognized some things that were happening with that individual's presentation and behaviors. The police arrived and called us to the scene. They, the police officers actually indicated some concerns with possible human trafficking, in addition to the vulnerability of that individual due to the presentation of possible mental illness. And our mobile crisis team was able to go out and try and work to engage that individual and offer some supports, getting them connected to resources. We also did partner police, Health West, and the emergency room to make sure that people were medically cleared and connected to inpatient facilities or crisis residential units or safely returned home after assuring that they were medically stable and then building safety plans and making sure they could be open to outpatient services here in our community. So, you know, the other part that we experienced was officers contacting mobile crisis for consultation where we really weren't necessarily needed at the scene, but they just wanted to talk out what they were seeing and hearing and understand that, yep, they were making the right call in what they were deciding to do and that we could then follow up with that individual the next day. Now, you, uh, Bruce had mentioned that you, you've done your first training, 40-hour training with 16 uh, officers representing different law enforcement agencies. Uh, what's the future look like? Uh, what's the goal uh, for this? And, and are there going to be additional trainings? Yes, we actually have two training dates already scheduled, one for June and one for September. Our goal is to get 80 sworn officers in Muskegon County, CIT, trained. Our goal is to get 100% of our officers some specialty training related to addressing mental health or behavioral health crises. But we are tackling CIT very aggressively to get those 80 officers out there who are pinned specifically CIT. Uh, and why is that? That is because not only will they get all of these awesome relationships built, in, but they're going to be the ambassadors for our community. They're going to be those individuals that we encourage to provide leadership. You know, one of the messages that we ended up with through our week of training was those 16 officers become our bridge to the mental health or behavioral health professionals. So we're all working together to help folks. And we also learned that there's a necessary training for behavioral health professionals. So one of the things we're gonna be working on is implementing what we call cop culture training. And that time we, we reverse roles and our law enforcement community will present to our behavioral health professionals so that 
those folks can learn more, you know, what does that officer's training look like before they hit the street? What are they really experiencing? And, and just put a whole new respect. I was able to participate in the Milo training during our week last week, which is a, a, a design of use of force training for officers. It was extremely eye-opening. Um, it put me in a position of having to be faced with making a decision to shoot a resident who was a threat to another resident. And whew, even though it was not real, my adrenaline was a pumping. And uh, we had great discussion following that experience. And I'm looking forward to a lot of my behavioral health professional partners going through that. They're going to have a whole new respect for what our officers are out there doing. Uh, we just have about four minutes left. Uh, so before final comments, Bruce, I want to ask you uh, one uh, last question in relation to what what do you tell or what would you tell uh, folks or law enforcement, your fellow law enforcement officers who may be a little reluctant uh, to go through this experience? What What's your message to them? I would say to them that, um, that we in law enforcement are resistant to change sometimes. Sometimes it's hard uh, for us to kind of grasp on to if somebody from outside law enforcement tells us, you know, hey, maybe we should try doing something different, you know, and, and uh, approach things differently. That's that's tough sometimes because um, if you've never been a police officer before, it's it's hard to understand. And I think Heather now has a, a good appreciation for some of those split second decisions that have to be made. And so it's it's hard for us sometimes to, to listen to those outsiders uh, tell us, you know, uh, how to respond to situations. Um, but I'm telling you, these tools that they're given in CIT training uh, are, are just so important. Uh, they, everybody should have this. Every law enforcement officer should have this. Um, th these are tools that are going to help keep them safe. It's going to help keep others in the community safe. And it's going to help connect people to, this, to the resources that we have in the community um, that, that they just weren't connected to before. So this is such a great thing. So uh, I'm going to take final comments from both of you, Heather. I'll start with you, and, and maybe keep you know keep in mind this this idea. So what's next? What are the next steps uh, after this? You know, next steps are really going to be to support and nurture the officers who have gone through training, so that we're following through, that we keep our word on our end for the things that we promised during that training to keep pushing forward on. And some of that looks like when they recognize a deficit in our community, when they out there in the field are recognizing there are resources we don't have, that they're going to report that to us. And then we're going to be pushing the leaders in our community to get those resources for us. That's one of the things we can do to, to back this up. Bruce, and, and final comments for, for you, um, you know, again, what, what, is, what is the true benefit now for Muskegon County to be uh, part of this and and are we leading the state or the nation as it relates to this? There are definitely some other communities throughout the nation that are doing this. I mean, we, we are modeling ours after um, other communities and we went out to a, uh, Calhoun County actually and got some training from them about how they put their CIT program together. Um, but I, I um, we're going to, I think, take over and lead the state in this for sure. Uh, we, we have such a good program started. Uh, we know that we have commitments from those that went through the, the program recently to help keep the momentum going. Uh, they now realize the benefit of having this collaborative approach. Um, I think that um, there are some definite needs in the community still that, and the more that we work together, the, the more we realize what some of those needs are and we'll, we can try to work together to, to resolve some of those things. Um, we have a, a good, start to a good working relationship between the hospital, mental health professionals, and law enforcement, and, and of course, others in the community. Um, but uh, I would say that we've got, we've got some room to grow still. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you so much, Heather, and, and uh, Detective Bruce Morningstar for your time uh, this afternoon in presenting this really I instrumental and valuable information. Again, Rotar Rotarians, this again shows the collaborative spirit that is Muskegon County, uh, and it's alive and well. Uh, and you can see the success that, that can happen when two agencies who might not necessarily uh, see each other on a regular basis actually partner together and work together for the greater good. And so thank you, Heather. 
Uh, thank you, Bruce, for joining us this afternoon and explaining this wonderful and valuable program. As always, uh, Rotarians, stay safe and stay healthy and look forward to seeing you all in person one day soon.